my name is Alicia. I am an actor, podcast host, a baker, and until just very recently, a writer, director of a short film. More on that in a second. In this video, I'm also gonna bake some apple butter cinnamon rolls with a maple glaze. Yeah, I know. There's a ton of apples that are in season on the property right now, and I thought, you know, how do I condense them and use them so that they don't go to waste? So I made a bunch of apple butter, and I'm gonna use the apple butter as part of the filling for the cinnamon rolls. Hopefully, it should taste good. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm baking and also the process I went through to make this short film. This video has a bit of everything. I think I'm actually gonna do a series of these specifically about the short film. I'm gonna do it in three parts, discussing the pre-production process, the production process, and the post-production process, and my general thoughts after the fact. And in each video, I will try and bake something at the same time. In regards to the baking, let me tell you what I put together. I added some warm milk and melted butter to some sugar and salt. I then added an egg and an egg yolk flour and started to mix it in my mixer. And don't stress about the ingredients or anything, I'll put the recipe down below. Back to the short film. I wrote a short film with a friend of mine as kind of an exercise last year. And it sat in the proverbial drawer for a very long time. I had no intention of actually making it, but I did write it so that it was a little bit production friendly in terms of being cheap if I ever wanted to actually do it. But things were happening in my career, I was very busy, so I wasn't really thinking about it too much. And then fast forward to May, 2023, the writer's strike. And suddenly all of my work evaporated. It was so shocking. All of these plans that I had for the summer, I was supposed to shoot two movies back to back. They did not move forward and I was very upset and wanting to gain some control of my situation. I was like, you know what? I'm pulling out this script, the short film that I wrote and I'm going to make it. And I pitched it to my friend who I co-wrote it with and she offered to go Dutch on the cost of making the short film. So that's how the short came to be. Once we had the short film, we needed to decide who was going to direct it. And long story short, the more I started asking around, the more everyone started telling me that I should direct it. And given that it was my short film and I co-wrote it and I kind of knew exactly how I wanted it to go, I figured, why not? It's my money. I can do what I want. <laughs> so that's what I did. Now that I had my director, I had to find our DP. And I actually asked a camera operator that I had worked with on Raising Dion if he was available to do the short film. And he was for a very tiny sliver of time because he's very busy. And that is when we decided we were gonna make the short film, which at that point was six weeks ahead of time. And given that I didn't have a job and I wasn't working and the entire industry was on strike, I was like, that seems like enough time. And it actually ended up being enough time. Now let's get back to the baking. So once you have kneaded the dough in your stand mixer for about eight minutes, just set it and forget it. Leave it for about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on the humidity and the warmth of your environment. Uh, for me, it ended up being a little bit closer to an hour. Good boy. I hope that you heard that. <laughs> there are so many hats to wear <laughs> when making a short film. And I should say, if you're thinking about making a short film, my one bit of advice before you even get started is to really ask yourself why. Why do you wanna make a short film? And why do you wanna make this short film? What are you trying to say about whatever it is? And I think, once you answer those questions, that's going to be your guiding star. I wore too many hats. I wore too many hats in the pre-production process because I was keeping busy, I didn't really notice, but it became a real problem in the production phase, which I'll get into in the next video. But in this instance, I mean, I did the shopping for our actors by going to Goodwill. I cast the actors, thankfully, one is a dear friend of mine and the other was a referral from a dear friend of mine. Um, organizing transportation and hotel stay for actors who were traveling from out of town and our DP who was traveling from out of town. I catered it myself. I catered it, my, I catered it myself. 
That's insane. I cooked the meals for everyone while I was also directing and acting in this project. It was nuts. I, I overdid it. And if I could offer any advice, it, look at how many hats you're wearing and realize once you're in production, like you're actually shooting it, which hats you can take off because you can only do so many things once you're in production. And I, I overextended myself. But altogether, I learned so much through the pre-production process and it was actually really fun and creative. I think my favorite thing that I did was art department buying all the little knickknacks and tchotchkes that ended up decorating our set was actually very enjoyable. I love going to thrift stores and vintage stores and finding interesting pieces. So that was a joy for me to do. And I think my least favorite thing I would say was the insurance, figuring out the right insurance agency to be able to insure our short film, which I, you need, you know, in case you break your equipment or someone breaks a leg or something like that you need insurance the the paperwork was intimidating to me and it gave me anxiety so i would say that was my least favorite aspect of pre-production back to the cinnamon rolls once the dough is ready you're going to punch it down roll it out and once you get it i don't know i didn't do any measuring you get it nice and wide and i covered it with my apple butter some brown sugar and some butter and it looks a little fragmented, but it's all gonna come out in the wash once it's baked. So I spread it all out, rolled it up, and then sliced them into eight pieces and assembled them in my baking dish and then covered it up so that it could proof for another half an hour. Once I found my DP, the rest of the crew came together really through my DP and his relationships. I actually found our onset production sound, but he found the rest of our crew members, which was just such a weight off of my shoulders. Um, but really the most complicated aspects of making our short film was that we weren't shooting in Los Angeles. We were shooting in the Bay Area. It involved a lot of transport, of equipment, actors, our DP, and those things were very expensive. And we had a budget of 10K, and we vowed not to go over that. And that was 10K all in. So we were very strategic about where, where we spent our money. That's why everything that is in the short film was created on a dirt cheap budget, but we were able to pay our crew members. And one thing I wanna say about filmmaking and assembling groups of people in general, make sure your crew is a reflection of the world you live in. I have been so lucky in my career to be on sets where there is just incredible diversity. And I wanted in my first production to honor that need for my sets. And that's why 85% of the people who are involved in my short film are either women or people of color. And I'm really proud of that. And I hope that when you make your short films or whatever project you go to make, you make sure that the people that are on your set look like the people you surround yourself with in the world. And if you're seeing a monotone, then maybe you should think about diversifying the world you live in because it's a big old world out there and there are a lot of talented people who come from a lot of different backgrounds. Make sure you're looking at a broad spectrum of creativity, personalities, perspectives, because it'll make your project better. I feel like I'm not really getting into anything specific in my pre-production process. So I think what I'm gonna suggest is if you want more on what I learned from my pre-production process of making my short film, why don't you drop a comment down below letting me know specifically questions that you have about what it takes to make a short film and everything pre-production. Insurance, wardrobe, casting, crew members, location. There's so many things and moving pieces that it requires. Catering, did I mention I catered my own short film like a freaking lunatic? There's so many aspects to pre-production and you know, a short film is its own very specific beast, right? Like it's not like making a feature, it's a very unique process. So if you have any specific questions on the pre-production process of a short film, drop them down below and I'll make a separate video about it. I love talking about this stuff. Okay, so now that the cinnamon rolls have proofed, I pop them in the oven for about 20 minutes. 
I know this video was a bit rambly, but I think it's just a jumping off point into this discussion I wanna have about short films and about what it takes to do something yourself. And I think if you have a good idea, if you have something that you wanna say, say it. Before I let you go, let's take a look at our cinnamon rolls. Even without the glaze on them, they still look really good. Yum! I'm actually gonna take these cinnamon rolls with me to a friend's house for dinner, so I'll show you what they look like once they're all glazed up, looking delicious. And thank you so much for watching this video.